All right, here's the thing. When you work with relays, here are the critical points. First thing is, relays are at least two circuits. It's a system, not a circuit, it's a system. Relays don't do relay things, relays are switches. The two components inside are a coil of wire which produces a magnetic field and a set of contacts that are pulled magnetically by that, uh, by that magnetic field, by that coil. When you're diagnosing a problem in a system that has a relay, it's a good idea to know whether or not it's the coil circuit or the contact circuit that's failed. The easiest way to do that is to take a, a relay with the cover removed, pull out the relay that's in question, stick the relay in that's got the cover off and squeeze the relay and see if the horn blows or see if the lights come on or see if the AC clutch moves. If it does, then it's not the lights, it's not the horn, and it's not the clutch. You can rule that out. Remember, you want to rule out things that are working right. The problem is going to be small. The problem you're looking for is tiny. I guarantee you it's going to be itty bitty, teeny weeny, tiny. Don't be looking for a massive problem. You need to be looking for a small problem. There are four segments to a relay. There's power to the coil and ground to the coil. There's power to the load, and there's the ground side of the load. So only one of those will probably have failed. So when you're diagnosing these systems, make sure that you remember two components in a relay, coil and contacts, and the first thing you want to try and do is to isolate from the coil to the contacts to see which one of those two circuits has actually failed. This is not that hard. It's something you can very easily do, and you need to be studying these relays so that you can understand them well enough that they become part of the solution and stop being part of the problem. A relay is an electromagnetic switch. In other words, a small amount of current flows through a magnetic coil. That magnetic coil energizes and it pulls the contacts closed. There are two circuits. The small amount of current can switch a large amount of current, like a horn, a clutch, or motor. The relay is a system, okay? It's not a single thing, it's two things. You need to think of it as two separate independent circuits inside one little black box. There are two circuits inside, a coil and a set of contacts. When the coil energizes, the contacts close. So when you troubleshoot, you need to be able to understand this. Okay, so here's how it looks. See, there are two circuits and coils in one, horns in the other. They're joined together only magnetically. There's an if-then scenario here. If you do something, something else should happen. Okay, so here's how it works. Number one, if you close the horn button, then two, the relay coil should magnetize, which then three should make the relay contacts close, which then four should make the horn blow. Okay. Now, when you diagnose a relay system, remember it's not a circuit, it's a system, the question you have to ask yourself is which circuit has actually failed? The coil circuit or the contact circuit, whatever you're actually energizing. Okay. The most common relay you're going to see is a little black square relay that sometimes people call the Bosch relay or the automotive relay. Okay, this is a very typical relay. It happens all the time. You'll see it a lot of different places. Okay, the pins never change. These three pins that I'm marking red are the switch. The bottom terminal is 30, top is 87, and middle is 87A. The two terminals on the flanks, I'm coloring green, are actually the coil terminals, 85 and 86. And notice on the bottom of the relay, they're 86, 85. Now there's another relay that Kenworth uses, and it's sometimes called the ISO relay. It's very similar to the other relay, but it has a different numbering scheme, maybe. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 instead of 85, 86, 30, 87, 87, 8. 1 and 2 are the coil, 3 is the common, 4 is the normally closed, and 5 is the normally open. This is what it looks like. Okay? So you're able to use this relay and the other relay in exactly the same way. The quickest, easiest, fastest way to do this is to pull the cover off of one of these things and uh, either watch it when you push the horn uh, button on the column or squeeze it like this. And when you squeeze it, that should complete the contacts. Close the contacts, which should make the horn blow. Um, remember, there's two circuits. 
the coil and the contacts, and you have to know which one is broken um, because only one of them will probably be broken. So in asking the question what's right, you want to answer that question as, f as fast as possible. And if you know that the horn's working, then it can't be the horn circuit. If it's the relay, when you push the button, the horn will blow and you replace the relay. If you squeeze it and the horn doesn't blow, but you push the horn button and it goes click, then you know it's the horn. So you've cut the problem down from four circuit segments to two just by taking this relay with the cover off and pushing the contacts. Oh, here's the relay with the cover removed. All right, and uh, all you have to do is uh, squeeze these contacts right here, and that will complete the circuit. But the quickest and easiest way to determine whether it's the coil or the contacts or the horn or the horn circuit, uh, co a coil circuit, is to stick the relay in. And this simply hit the contacts. Sorry, it's me. You can also push the horn button. And actually watch the horn relay energize. So let's review this. Known good working relay with the cover removed. Squeeze the contacts. If the horn blows, it's not the horn. Push the horn button. If the relay clicks and the horn blows, it's the relay. If you push the horn button um, and the relay clicks, but the horn doesn't blow, then you know the coil circuit's working and you know that there's a problem in the horn circuit. Remember, two circuits, coil, contact. Your first objective should be figure out which one all right, here's how this works in a schematic. 30 and 87 normally open contacts. 30 goes to the fuse, 87 goes to the horn. And when you complete the circuit through the contacts, 30 and 87, the horn should blow, right? So you push the contacts on your uncovered relay. Does the horn blow or not? If yes, it isn't broken. If no, it probably is. Okay, now we've got the coil circuit that runs from the fuse to the steering column for the horn switch. Okay, here's 87A. We're not using it, but there it is. Okay. So, coil circuit's green, contact circuit red, they're separate, okay? If I put in the known good working relay, then I can either push the horn button and watch it work, or close the contacts and hope that the uh, horn blows. Either way, I should be able to know by looking and listening which uh, is actually broken. By doing this, you isolate the fault to one circuit or the other. Okay, you'll get used to this. You'll know uh, after a while how it works, you'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Well, if you're curious and you don't want to play relay roulette by pulling out relays and swapping them around, just use a 9 volt battery, 85 and 86, and the relay ought to go click. Okay. Here's one installed in a relay base, 9 volt battery. Um, Got to watch the diode, but you ought to just be able to touch the relay to a uh, 9 volt battery and determine whether or not it's clicking. You can listen to it and you can watch it and you can ohm out the contacts. You can do whatever you want to do, but the contact should move, but remember the coil may or may not be working. So, you know, both have to work, coil and contacts, in order for the relay to be good. Okay, so review here. Common, shared, it's number 30, 87A and 87 normally closed, normally open. 85 and 86 are the coil. Okay, those are the switch terminals. 85 and 86 are the coil contacts. And the only connection between the two is a magnetic field. There's no electrical connection inside the relay okay the contacts do not connect to the coil okay what if there's a diode the diode is there specifically to suppress the arc caused when the magnetic field collapse in the coils just like an ignition coil okay the coil stores energy and when it stores the energy that energy has to go somewhere okay now look at this illustration there's the diode on the left pointing to 86 okay when you look at this diode, don't try to figure out current flow. Don't try to understand what's going on with current flow. Notice that this diode is pointing to positive. That means it's in reverse bias. It will always be that way forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Never any other way. So when you read a schematic, that's what you'll see. Okay, here's how it works. When you close the switch, the diode's installed in reverse bias. What happens is 
if we use positive flow, current flows through the coil and the coil does its thing, but the diode blocks the current that way, so current cannot flow through the diode. See, it's flowing through the coil, but not the diode. The coil builds up a magnetic field, and this is stored energy. It's energy that has to go away. Again, think ignition coil, okay, spark plug. Well, when you open the switch, what happens is that energy has to go somewhere, and what it is going to do is try to go in the same way it's been going and run around the corner and come back over through positive and arc the switch. But it doesn't. It stays inside the diode and it essentially prevents that energy from arcing the switch. All it does is stay home in the diode. Okay, let's look at this in summary. Relay. Okay, three switch terminals, two coil terminals. Fuse goes to 30, 87 goes to the horn, close the contacts, the horn blows. The horn could be 100 feet away. 85 and 86 are the coil, fuse, from, uh, fuse to 85, 86 goes to the horn switch, which is in the column, which is hard to get to. The horn could be 100 feet away, and the fuses and the fuse wires are buried in the panel. So look, if you understand how a relay works, you can test the entire system from this one square inch. There are two voltage readings. And there are two ohm readings. You should read system voltage at 30. You should read system voltage at 85. The ohm meter should show you whatever the horn resistance is, and we'll just say 10 ohms. And you ought to read 86, uh, OL and 0 when you push the horn switch. You can test the entire system from this relay, and you never have to go chasing and looking for anything else on the truck ever again. Don't forget that all the information that you just heard is available in the 200-page Fundamental Electrical Troubleshooting Shop book that I wrote. It's written by a mechanic for mechanics. It's available on most tool trucks if you ask your tool man. And if you can't find it there, then you can go online to our website at brighterideas.com and check out the uh, links there for purchasing it from a couple of our different distributors.